Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you are all doing very well on this lovely Wednesday afternoon for me. If it's earlier on Wednesday or later on Wednesday for you, or even maybe Thursday, um, I hope you are all doing very, very well. Um, I'm coming today to you with a video that was kind of recommended. Do you remember a couple of videos ago I asked people what they wanted to see? And I had a couple of people say to me that they wanted me to do a video regarding modern American classics that they may have missed that they should have read. But I thought that was a really interesting idea because I'm often introduced to books that I thought I would have heard of or have people are always like, you haven't heard of that? And I'm like, as a reader, we're expected to have heard of everything. And that is just not possible. So in this video, I'm going to try to introduce you to some books. Maybe you've heard of some of them. Maybe you haven't read them. So maybe I'll kick start you into actually purchasing them and then reading them. Um, I have six or seven of them. And then I have an extra book that's going to start us off. So let's get started right away. The first book I'm going to tell you about, most of you have probably heard of. You should, you've heard of it. You've all heard of it. But it comes with a cute story, and I have a reason I'm bringing that up. And that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Now, this story is really about my grandmother. On August, uh, sorry, October 5th of this year, my grandmother turns 90 years old. And arguably, she's probably one of the most, probably, there's no probably about it. Um, she's one of the most important people ever in my life. She's the reason I'm a reader. Um, she's my fellow reader. She um, started reading fantasy novels in junior high with me so that I would have someone to talk to them about. Um, and she was the first person to buy me my ever first gay fiction. She was the first person to really accept me for every part of me before even really I had accepted myself. And um, I love her. I'll put a picture of her right here so you guys can take a look. She's one of, she's one of my favorite people ever. Um, in the world and she'll be 90 in October so a few years ago as in probably 20 <laughs> um, my cousin was in high school and was asked to read To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee and she didn't want to do it so my grandmother said that she would read it with her and she called me after it was done and she's like Russell have you heard of this book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee I mean I've never heard of it and it is amazing, and I just finished it, and you really have to read it. Now, I was out of college at the time, so I had read To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee probably four or five times by then. Um, but I was in awe. One, my grandmother reads four and five books a week, and her love of this classic that she had never heard of was awe-inspiring. And th isn't this a great edition? This is a Barnes & Noble edition, hardback with a little uh, ribbon thing. It's beautiful. I got it for $5.99. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Um, but this is the story. If you haven't heard of it or you don't know what it's about, this is the story of Scout. She's a young girl. She lives in Alabama. And she um, sort of gets involved in... <sighs> There's so much in this book. It's so hard to like sum up in a sentence. But basically, it's about racism. It's about wrongly accused people being convicted of crimes. It's about misconceptions, judging people by what you think you know about them without really knowing that about them. It's about friendship. It's about family. Atticus Finch is one of the strongest father characters ever written in literature, hands down. It is beautifully written, it is well told, you will be compelled, and it is worth every moment. And once you finish it, go watch the movie, because Gregory Peck, as Atticus Finch, is mind-blowing and worth watching every minute of the movie for. So, if you haven't, this is just kind of an aside to Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. If it's one of those ones you've always meant to read, really, you should read it. It is that good. Now to get into the list of books that you probably maybe have heard of, maybe haven't heard of, maybe need to read. The first book I'm going to tell you about is Death in the Family by James Aji. I don't know how to say that, Aji. Um, and this came out in 1957, 1957, two years actually after James had died. And it wound up winning the Pulitzer. And actually there's going to be another author that unfortunately that happened to on this year. This is the story of a man who is on his way home and he is on his way home to Tennessee and he is killed in a car accident and the effects that that death and loss of life have on a bunch of people. It is, um, the back of the book describes it as a work of art, an autobiographical novel that contains one of the most evocative depictions of loss and grief ever written. That's it. That's all you really need to know. It is 
beautifully written. And you probably have never heard of it because I had never heard of it, yeah, right? Because I haven't heard of it, you haven't heard of it. But Thomas over at Hogglestock.com and of the readers recommended this on a podcast ages ago. I picked it up and I read it and it was totally worth every minute of it. And that's the De A Death in the Family by James Aji. And um, it is fantastic. The next book, a lot of these books are going to come with movies, is Midnight in the Garden of Good of Evil by John Ber Berent? Berent. And this is an old copy that I actually wound up picking up at a used book sale. So that's the other thing. Most of these books are going to exist in used form or at your library, so it won't be hard to get it. And this is actually nonfiction, so I don't throw in a lot of nonfiction very often. This is the story of Savannah, Georgia, and a murder that occurred, and a journalist that went down to investigate that murder and the people in it. This was one of the first books that I ever read that had a truly three-dimensional portrait of a transgender person. Um, Lady Chablis is fantastic, and you will adore her. And um, she makes a, a compelling reason to read this novel in and of itself. It is about a man who kills a young man and sort of the investigation into that, the trial, what follows the trial. Um, it is also a very great movie with John Cusack, I want to say, and I can't remember who plays the... Mm, I can't remember, but it's also really good. So read this and then go and watch that movie. I'm giving you guys like a book and a movie recommendation twice. And that's A Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Burdent. It reads like a novel. So don't get worried if you're worried a little bit about I don't read nonfiction. You won't even be able to tell really. It's like more of a first person narrative novel than anything else. One of my favorite American writers is Willa Cather. Now most people have read my Antonia or My Antonia and O Pioneers, but she really did write a bunch of fantastic books. And my friend Chris Wolak of the Book Cougars loves her. Um, Thomas, again, of Hogglestock.com, was reading one of her books every month for this year. She's really fantastic. And my favorite by her is A Lost Lady. And it's one of those books that doesn't get read, I think, enough of hers, because it is really fantastic. It's a story of a young boy who meets a married woman, and he falls in love with her. It's not a romantic relationship, but you know that infatuation of when you meet that person that is just larger than life, and she is larger than life. She is, I think the book describes her as dazzling, pathetic, steadfast, and faithful, faithless. Um, so she's a conundrum in and of herself. He becomes sort of her confidant, so in doing so, he um, learns about her. Um, there's a line somewhere that says that this was Willa Cather's response to Madame Bovary, so it kind of gives you an idea of what you're getting yourself into. It's not a big book. It is a beautifully written book. Willa Cather can turn a phrase. I'm just telling you right now. So if you haven't read any Willa Cather, this is a fantastic place to start, and she is one of my favorite American authors, and I really, really think you guys would like this one. So that's A Lost Lady by Willa Cather. Next, but not in any way to be forgotten, is one of my favorite American writers, and that's Cormac McCarthy, who I would argue is probably, with Toni Morrison, one of the greatest living American writers at this time. And they're both in their 70s or 80s, so they won't be with us much longer. Thank, good they, thank goodness that they left us so ama some amazing novels. Now, Blood Meridian is not an easy book. It is a dark, twisted, graphic tale, and... Cormac McCarthy is not for everybody, so don't feel bad if he's not for you, because he has his own very distinct style. He does write very vividly, but very graphic at times when necessary. Not overly graphic, but it's definitely there. Um, this is based on a true story of an event that occurred at the Texas-Mexico border, I think in the 1850s. It's a story of a boy called The Kid, that's the only name we really get for him, and his involvement in basically the slaughter of a a bunch of Indians and there is one of the evilest characters I've ever read in my entire life in this book called the judge you will hate him he is nasty and gross and this book is fantastic now all the pretty horses which won the National Book Award I think is an easier book to read and also fantastic but not as 
gut-wrenching. Um, no Country for Old Men was turned into a pretty good movie in and of itself, but that one is more of a plot-driven thriller, so if that's where you want to start with Cormac McCarthy, that's a great place to start too. He also won the Pulitzer for The Road. Now, I think that's probably the Cormac McCarthy most of you have read, and it's really his one-off. It is not like his other novels. It's fantastic in its own right, but I really think Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy is his magnum opus, and I think more people should read it, so if you haven't, pick it up. Um, I recommended to you guys Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. These books are similar in vain, so if you liked that, you'll like this. If you like this, you'll like that. And he's just an amazing writer and fantastic. Next is my comedy turn on the uh, on this little trip down American classics, and that's A Confederacy. Baxter's in the uh, room. A bunch of uh, Baxter and Blanche had to go to the vet today, so they are both feeling a little grumpy. They had to get their shots and their rabies and all that taken care of, so he's in the room with me right now. This is A Confederate of Dunces by John Kennedy O'Toole, and this is another one. This man had been trying to get his book published, and he passed away, and it did get published, and it wound up winning the Pulitzer after he passed away. This is the story of Ignatius J. Riley. Is that his middle initial? J. Riley an obese genius in New Orleans. So if you like fiction set in New Orleans, you'll really love this book. If you want to laugh, you will love this book. Ignatius is a crazy, weird, over-the-top man that you will never forget once you finished it. It's a bit of a chunkster, so you'll definitely get lost in it. And it is fantastic. And it's really sad that this was the only book he was able to publish because he clearly is talented. Um, it is a little long. I did find towards the end I was rushing a little bit. Um, but that, I think, is because I don't read a lot of really funny stuff. But it is seriously funny. It is so well written. Ignatius will stay with you forever. And that is A Confederacy of Dumpses by John Kennedy Toole. And then last but not least was one that I was a little worried to put on the list because I think I would assume a lot of people have read it. But I know a lot of people don't read science fiction type novels or type literature all the time. So I wanted to put it out there just in case you haven't read it. And that's Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Now again, Kurt Vonnegut is one of the funniest writers I've ever read. But he's also one of the weirdest. Like his books jump around. They don't always make sense until you get to the end. His characters are offbeat and crazy. And I'm going to read the back of this one just because um, it's hard to explain and I haven't read it in a while. So it's one of the world's greatest anti-war books centering on the infamous firebombing of Dresden. Billy Pilgrim's Odyssey Through Time reflects the mythic journey of our own fractured lives as we search for meaning in what we are afraid to know. So again, this has some time travel in it, and that's sort of the sci-fi nature of it. It will make you laugh. It will also make you really think about some things you probably haven't thought about. So that is a bunch of modern classics. I hope one or two of them you haven't read, hopefully more. If you have read them, let's discuss it down below. I want to thank everyone who has joined the Ink and Paper blog Goodreads page. I'll, it's down below if you want to join. We're having some great conversations, people recommending books to each other, talking about what they're reading this month. Um, I just put up a new topic today, what's a book that you um, think more people have read, should have read that they haven't heard of. I'll try to keep going on that, coming up with topics and ideas, so again, I really appreciate it. Um, if you are returning to my channel, thank you so much. I appreciate all your comments and really love having you guys along. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you liked what you saw. And I will talk to you guys in a few days. Until later, happy reading and bye!